Welcome back to the deep dive. You know, there is this really universal uh, human search for coherence. Mm, absolutely. We live in a world that can feel so chaotic, so fragmented, mm. and yet we have this deep innate desire to find some kind of unifying thread. Right. Something that connects our inner world, our soul, our thoughts to the, you know, the external reality we're all walking through. It's the ultimate why, really. Yeah. But for centuries, we've kind of kept the how, the physical laws of the universe. Completely separate from the why. The world of consciousness, spirituality, psychology, that was over there. But the sources we're looking at today suggest that that whole separation is, well, an illusion. A big one. Okay, so let's unpack this. We're taking a deep dive into sources that propose a stunning union of three fields you would probably never expect to see in the same sentence. Right. We have quantum physics straight out of the lab, then Jungian synchronicity from the psychoanalyst clinic, and finally, the ancient mystical wisdom of Kabbalah. And what's so fascinating is they come from completely different worlds, different times, but they all point to this remarkably similar core idea. Which is? That reality isn't some fixed predetermined script that you're just forced to read okay it's an infinite field of potential and and this is the key part it absolutely requires a conscious observer yeah to define it so this is way more than just positive thinking yeah. this is challenging the fundamental idea of a fixed material world that exists without us exactly the message here is so empowering we're moving consciousness from being like a side effect of reality to being the primary engine of reality that's it so the whole mission of this deep dive is to show you precisely how your consciousness is the ultimate tuning mechanism for the universe and to do that we have to start with a big shift in perspective, moving from that old kind of clockwork model. To this new field of potential. Yeah, we have to acknowledge the giant shadow that classical Newtonian physics cast over everything. For centuries, the universe was seen as this perfect machine. A clock. If you knew the speed and position of every particle, you could, in theory, predict the future with absolute certainty. Which doesn't leave much room for us. Human agency in that model was basically an illusion. We were just cogs. But then quantum mechanics comes along in the 20th century and just shatters that entire deterministic view. And this is where it gets really, really interesting. When you look at the Copenhagen interpretation of the Schrodinger equation, mm -hmm. yeah, because that interpretation dictates that at the subatomic level, particles don't have a definite existence until they're actually observed. Measured. Before that measurement, the whole system is in a state called superposition. And what does that mean exactly, superposition? Well, think of it like you're at a cosmic restaurant with an infinite menu. Okay. Before you, the observer, place an order, which is the act of measurement. Every single possible meal exists on the table at the same time. So the particle isn't here or there. It's both here and there. It's a cloud of mathematical probabilities. And the sources are really clear on this point. This isn't just about us not knowing where it is. That was an early idea. Right, the hidden variables theory. Which modern science has largely dismissed. The potential is genuinely infinite and undefined until that interaction. The act of measurement causes what they call decoherence. It reduces those infinite possibilities down to one single concrete reality. Right. It collapses the potential into a fact. Now, if we connect that scientific structure to you know, the bigger spiritual picture. The parallel is stunning. It mirrors the Kabbalistic concept of creation perfectly. How so? Well, the state before creation is called ayin, or nothingness. Or another term is ein self, the infinite. And just like the quantum wave function. The mind self contains all possible realities in a state of infinite potential before anything is brought into existence. Okay, so the creation model and the quantum model are structurally mirror images of each other. This primordial potential. But here's the leap for a skeptic, right? How do we bridge the gap between a physical force observation collapsing a wave function and an internal state, like spiritual intent? Are we saying consciousness is a physical force? Well, the sources don't quite say it's a force like gravity. It's more that consciousness is the required ingredient for definition. It's what makes things real. Exactly. Kabbalah is explicit about our role here. It says, man is a shutaf alakadosh baruch hu, a partner with the divine in the ongoing work of creation. We're not just watching the show. We are active participants. Right. We are standing before that sea of infinite quantum variables. Our interactions, our intent, that's what determines which variable becomes a defined fact. So if quantum physics provides the structure, this infinite menu of choices, then how do we, you know, navigate it in our daily lives? How does the external world start to reflect our internal choices? Yeah. 
And that brings us straight to Carl Jung and his idea of meaningful coincidences. Synchronicity. Right. Synchronicity. Jung called it an a causal connecting principle, meaning these are events that you can explain by simple cause and effect, but they're clearly connected by meaning. And this idea isn't new. It's deeply woven into ancient thought, especially in the Jewish perspective. Oh, absolutely. In that tradition, there's literally no such thing as coincidence. It's considered an impossibility. The sources point out that the Hebrew word for coincidence, micre, is an anagram for rachmahashem. Which means only from God. <laughs> so every so-called coincidence is actually hashkatur pravet. Divine providence. But this is so important. It's often misinterpreted as passive fate, like God just decided everything beforehand. I mean, that's not what this synthesis is saying. No, it's understood as a responsive interaction. It's a mechanism. The Baal Shemtov taught that where a person's thoughts are, there he is entirely. So the universe confirms the thoughts you hold. And what stands out to you is literally what the universe is going to show you. There's actually a beautiful biological parallel for this in the brain. The reticular activating system, the RAS. The RAS. It's our brain's brilliant and very necessary filter. It has to filter the millions of bits of sensory data that are bombarding us every second. We can't possibly perceive everything. No way. So our brain has to prioritize based on our focus, our internal narrative. The analogy is you're being hit by a million radio signals, but your RAS is the tuner. So if I suddenly decide I want to buy a vintage, let's say, a 1970s blue Ford Bronco, uh -huh. which I haven't thought about in years. And then all of a sudden I start seeing blue Broncos everywhere, on the street, in movies, online. That's not the universe spontaneously generating more classic cars. No, it's my RAS. It's been reprogrammed on my intent. Exactly. When you clarify your Kavanaugh, your deepest intent, you are literally programming your RAS to hunt for specific data points in the world. The world didn't change. My perception did. Your perception changed. Yeah. This synchronicity is the external world mirroring that internal psychic state. We called it the confirmation ping. It's the universe saying, yep, that's the path you've chosen. We hear you. The coincidence is the universe confirming your path because your internal frequency has finally matched an external signal. You tuned your radio to a station that was broadcasting the whole time. And now you're finally hearing the music. And this ties directly to the Kabbalistic idea that the light of the infinite fills the cly, the vessel, that you have shaped with your focused mind. So you haven't just made a wish. You've actually defined the container. And the potential just flows into the available container. The lesson here is so profound. Your lack of focus is the very reason your reality feels chaotic. Okay, so if the quantum field is the broadcast and synchronicity is the music, we need to get practical. We need to talk about the act of alignment. The exact process of tuning the dial precisely, how do we hold that frequency? This is where practical spiritual paths come in, like halacha. Right, and most people hear halacha and they think Jewish law, rigid rules, compliance. A static set of regulations. But the word itself actually comes from the root hiluf, which means to walk. That reframes it completely. Totally. The sources see it as a dynamic way of being aligned. You're walking on the correct spiritual wavelength by harmonizing your physical actions, your masa. With the proper spiritual intent, the Kavanaugh. So the alignment is making sure the action matches the frequency you've chosen. And to get that kind of focus, we need to understand another really powerful Kabbalistic concept, simsum. Contraction. This is the process God used to create the world, right? The infinite had to contract his light to make space for existence. How do we apply something so cosmic to our own minds? Psychological zimsum. It's the conscious, disciplined act of contracting your own attention. If you accept that you're standing before an infinite wave of possibilities... Your job isn't to expand your energy, but to narrow it. You have to. You must ruthlessly narrow your focus, exclude all the infinite distractions, all the irrelevant timeline possibilities that aren't serving your mission. And that's how you bring one specific aligned reality into being. It's a muscle. When you look at successful people in any field, they are masters of simsim. They just don't have time for the million things that aren't the one thing. They can track their attention. And when that intense alignment happens, when that focused Kavanaugh and that aligned Ma'asa are perfectly synced. Then you achieve Dvika. Clinging to the source. You're yeah. connected to the true flow of potential. Psychologically, that state is a perfect match for what Mahali 
six cent mahali called flow. Absolutely. In a flow state, all the friction just disappears. The action becomes effortless. And you get that beautiful sense of timelessness. You're connecting to something outside of linear fragmented time. And the contrast is so critical. When a person is out of alignment, they are like a radio that's just picking up static. A chaotic signal. A chaotic signal. A scattered, confused intent. And their measurement on the quantum field becomes erratic. The result is a reality that feels random, full of roadblocks. And what we would call being unlucky. That's a devastating mechanism, isn't it? Your reality is just reflecting your chaotic intent. But the solution is clear. And it's incredibly empowering. Yes. When your Kavanaugh and your Ma'asa align, you are not waiting around for luck. You are pre-selecting the specific outcome. You're forcing the wave function to collapse in the way you intend. You are actively choosing your luck. So what does this all mean for you listening right now? It means that the intersection of these three fields gives us this deeply empowering view of human agency. You are not a passive victim of fate. You are a shutaf, a partner. You're responsible for using your bechaira, your free choice, to select your path and stabilize your reality. Scientific materialism has taught us for so long that seeing is believing. Hmm. Wait for the external proof before you allow yourself any internal certainty. But this synthesis completely flips the script. It argues the direction of creation flows from the internal certainty outward to the external manifestation. Your mind functions as the measuring tool. It collapses the wave function. And the critical emotional piece here is bichat. Trust. But it's misunderstood if you see it as just passive hope, like wishing on a star. It's not that. It is an active, deeply held mental state of certainty. It's the emotional energy of the measurement itself that stabilizes the wave function and influences the outcome. Okay, so if doubt and anxiety are forms of mental chaos that keep all those negative possibilities alive at the same time, then Bidishan, that certainty, is the focused energy that collapses the system quickly and cleanly into the one reality you desire. When your mind holds that unwavering certainty, it's refusing to let the other infinite negative possibilities come into being. It's an act of will. This gives us what we can call the distilled life lesson, the law of intentional collapse. We have four clear required action steps. Okay, first, define the mission, the frequency. You have to know exactly what station you're aiming for. Vague desires like, I want to be happy and rich. That's too chaotic. You have to define a tangible outcome. That's the focus for your zimzum. Second, practice zimzum, the focus. Ruthlessly eliminate every single thought and action that doesn't align with that frequency. If your mission is health, you can track your focus away from poor habits. You're actively editing your potential reality in real time. Third, awaken from below. Itaruta deleta. This is huge. Don't wait for the universe to come rescue you. Don't wait for the perfect opportunity. This concept from the Zohar says the upper world won't give anything until the lower world takes action first. You have to initiate the first aligned step. Practice joy and abundance will respond. And fourth, the ultimate conclusion that ties it all together. Do not wait to see it to believe it. Because belief, that focused intent, that act of certainty, that bidashan, that ice, the measurement that allows you to see it, it is the prerequisite for the collapse. The central, really upbeat takeaway here is so important. You are not a passive victim of a fixed world. Not at all. At each and every moment, because before the measurement, all possibilities exist, your past does not determine your future. The wave function is constantly resetting. You are always, right now, capable of performing simsum and tuning your Kavanaugh. You get to choose your reality by choosing your belief. So if your current reality is simply the result of the last measurement you made, the sum total of your previous certainty or your previous doubt, what one single thought or action are you choosing to focus on right now to perform that act of symptom and force the universe to rearrange itself in the very next moment? What reality are you choosing to collapse into existence today? 